What is up guys? Today we got a new mod for the for the V-Rod today. Um, if you guys have ever been out riding on the highway or on any kind of long trip, you guys have probably noticed, depending on your height, um, I'm 5'11", but after, if I'm on a good highway ride and there's some good wind or if I'm on a kind of a long distance ride, I start to notice that my inner hips start to get kind of tired. And part of the problem is, is that for me and my height, the, well, and my, you know, the length of my legs, uh, my, my inner kind of groin area starts to get super tired after I'm on the highway for a bit because the air just kind of want to, wants to pull your knees away from the tank of the bike and it just kind of wears you out and it gets you tired. So oftentimes I'll be putting my heels and my boots on my front pegs and just, you know, find myself kind of trying to adjust and get in these weird positions to make it more comfortable. So um, today we're going to fix that problem. Um, stock is the... Um, the stock controls here, these are forward controls, but these are just the stock um, 12 and newer night rod special controls. Um, so we are going to swap these out with some new um, forward controls from Altered State Design. So these are the one and three quarter inch Psycho controls with the heel shifter also. Um, and I've got some new Arlen S pegs and to go with everything, but um, super excited to get these on. Another cool thing about these is if if you can if you notice here on the bike, the stock pegs are they are mostly black, but they do have the actual shifter, the shifter arm. You can see there is, is like a silver polished material. So and over here on the right side the actual brake lever itself is a big kind of silver le lever and there's not a whole lot of silver on this bike there's a you know there's some bolts um the front forks and some other stuff the rear shocks those are still kind of polished or chrome or silver but mostly the bike is blacked out so this will be a, a cool add to um to get the more blacked out of the bike i should say if i could talk um, so I'm looking forward to get these things on, not only for the looks, but hopefully these are going to push my legs out just forward enough so it'll straighten out my leg. So when I'm on the highway riding, naturally my legs will kind of be want to straight and they won't want to bow out as much and, and tire my hips out when I'm riding. So, um, I'm going to, Keith, um, uh, McElhaney at, at Altered Status who makes these, um, highly recommend him. Um, so I've asked him a lot of questions and he's been super patient with me and worked through me with with all the questions that I've had so big shout out to him um, and again these things are just they're just extremely extremely well made um, the finish is super nice these do have the pro axles that is an option um, I believe you can run the stock axles in these and you can have them pressed in but these already actually do have um, the pro axles installed so i'm going to get started stay tuned all right guys so first step of the process to install the the uh, altered state designs for controls um I, i've got the chalk uh the bike the front tires in the chalk right now but i'm gonna go ahead and and jack the bike up it just makes it easier so i'm not laying on the ground having to get under the bike to really see you know everything that i'm working on so i've got it jacked up um the next thing I want to do right off the bat is, is you can really see how close, um, it's actually not as bad on this side, but you can see how close these controls are to the actual radiator shroud here that's painted. This side is even way worse. I mean, it's almost, it's super tight over here. But what I'm going to do is, um, I do have some, I've got some blue 3M tape. And I'm just going to tape up the shroud all around where I'm going to be working around that area. So I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to get started on the shift side first. Um, per the instructions, this is the simpler of the two sides. Um, that makes sense because there's looks like there's not a whole lot to do here. Um, but it will, you know, I'll, I'll familiarize myself with the process as I'm going through on the simpler side. So and what all I, well, I'm kind of working with here. Uh, but there's really um, two bolts that you need to remove. So you've got a, this is a 
five millimeter Allen bolt down here. And then this main bolt right here, this is a eight millimeter Allen. So I'm going to start by removing, I'm going to, I'm going to remove the bolt holding the shift rod on first. Um, with everything kind of solidly mounted, I think it'll just make it easier to remove this one first because if you remove this first, you're going to be holding the whole shifter assembly kind of in your hands trying to get out this, this bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this five millimeter Allen bolt first. So I can see on this bolt, um, I don't know if you can see inside here, but there's definitely some yellow looking thread locker on here. So I am going to put some thread locker back on this bolt when I do the install of the new control. Let's go ahead and get this out of here. And I'm just gonna leave the shift rod to kind of hang down there. And then let's take our T8 and undo this main bolt here. Same thing here, I can really feel on the threads that there's Definitely some thread lock on here, so let's go ahead and remove this. And guys, keep keep a hold on the assembly when you're taking it apart. I can kind of feel it wanting to fall, so I I do have everything taped up here, but I think it just makes it easier. So guys, you can kind of see here where the stock axle kind of fits into the frame. Um, there's some kind of crud in there. I'm going to get that wiped out, but you can kind of see here, here's the stock axle here. Now you can reuse these and press these into the new four controls, but um, the ones I got actually already have new axles, pro axles. I'm not, I'm not sure what the difference really is already into them. So we are going to start working on getting those installed. The next thing you need to do here um, is, I'm going to take this bolt out here, but there is a little c-clip that is right here that needs to be taken out because i need to use this pin the whole piece that goes through here as well as the c-clip to fit the new peg onto the new four controls so that you you can probably use needle nose pliers here to compress this clip but i've actually got these are just little cheapy harbor freight um to be honest i'm not even sure what you want to call these but you can see here and this may not even work but there's there's two little prongs here this is like a spreader tool so you're just going to insert them into the let me make sure you guys can see this you're just going to insert them in here if i can oops There we go. So I've got it pulled up just enough that I think I can. There we go. Okay. So guys, I, I apologize if there's the lighting is not good here, but this you can see it's kind of like a little horse-shaped shoe clip, and I um, it is slightly bent, but these are small enough that I can easily bend this back to shape. So what when you, when you get this out, it allows this pin just to slide right out like so. And I need these to put on my new toe pegs from Arlen Ness onto the four controls. So let me grab those. This goes like this on the bike and the front goes forward. So this side right here is the front of the forward control so when you're putting the the this is actually the heel when you put the heel peg in you want the flat part facing towards the front of the bike because when it's in here you want it to be able to break away towards the rear of the bike if you know you get that low so i'm going to set this in here this is going to go through the top Alright guys, so that thing, this is the left side, it's fully 
prepped and ready to go. Grunge in the frame here. And some road grime from use that it does have. Um, let me grab the bolt. No, I take that back. Okay. So I'm going to loosely fit on. Is this threaded? Yes, it is. I'm going to loosely fit, thread in the old, the stock bolt and the shift rod into the control, just kind of loosely like that. And then I'm going to loosely run this into the frame. And this is not the same size. Let me see what size it is. So the main bolt to hold the new control on is an Allen size. This is a six millimeter. So we are going to, by hand, lightly thread this in. If I can bolt that here. Guys, so I can't stress enough when you're installing you know, new parts. Just try and get everything in by hand first and kind of loose before you tighten anything down. So this is threading right in. The shift rod's threaded in. Like so. And that that looks correct. I think this will all tighten down more as I get going. But this this orientation I can immediately tell I can already tell right here is correct. So on your on your heel peg, you can see it's installed correctly because it can only break away rearward towards the bike and it's and it stops there too. And it, um, the forward in the forward position and in rearward position it stops there. So I'm going to finish running this main bolt in here and tighten this thing up somewhat so we can get some tension here and move you guys here so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing so another thing I wanted to show you guys here was that I was kind of confused on this thing this the heel peg it can potentially rotate freely on the axle but if you look in here, you see how there's a flat spot on the, on the end of the axle that goes into the frame of the bike? So that can only go in one way. So as you're spinning it, that flat part actually catches on the flat part inside of the frame of the bike, putting this heel peg in the correct position that you want. Another thing too, while I was kind of doing some more digging on this, so I, I busted out the factory service manual, and one thing that I forgot to do was it specifically calls out for blue Loctite, which is the medium thread. So I'm going to put a few drops on the bolt in there. And the other thing is, is that the torque value for this is 44 to 55 foot-pounds for... 44 to 55 here on this bolt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this going by hand and I'm actually going to do, I'm gonna torque it down right in the middle to 50 foot pounds. So let me get this going here. See if you kind of rotate this back and forth as you're turning in, you can feel it kind of lock into where it needs to go. So there's really no way you can screw up the orientation of how this is supposed to go. So let me go ahead and run this in a bit here. I've already got my torque wrench out, fully seated in here just like that. Okay, so I don't want to strip this thing.
The other thing too is, is that on this lower shift rod bolt, the manual does not specify to put any thread locker on this, but it does say to do 80 to 130 inch pounds. So I've got my inch pound torque wrench set to that, and we are going to right there. All right, so guys, that should be it. All right, guys, so moving on to the right side on the brake side of the bike. Um, the first step into removing these, the stock controls are there is a, I don't know if you can even see this. Um, right there is a cotter pin that is somewhat wrapped around the pin holding the brake. I don't know if that's a master cylinder or what that is, uh, but, but there's a cotter pin that's kind of spread around the pin that's holding that brake master cylinder. So that's the first step is you kind of just got to move the outer arms of the cotter pin down. That way you can actually pull the cotter pin up and through the pin. This is also where it's critical that you need to make sure that you've got the paint covered up on this thing because for me to get back there and to move that, I'm really going to have to get close to the paint. So um, stay tuned and let me bend this thing out of the way and get that cotter pin removed. Real quick too guys, so I've got um, some different, several different sets of Harbor Freight um, needle nose pliers. So this is kind of a long curve set. And I'm going to use those and I'm also going to be using just a standard set here to, to try and remove this cotter pin. Pin here, right there. You can see the hole where the cotter pin was and that will allow you to move the pedal out of the way here. So now what we got to do is remove the main bolt here and again this is a T8 yes this is a T8 that we're going to remove bend the peg out of the way T8 it is let's get this guy out of here and just like that out comes the stock arm and the, the pedal so now we are going to go back up to the bench and same thing here. I'm going to remove this fun clip here and I need this pin and this clip here so I can install the new peg onto the new rear set. So. All right guys, so same thing on this side. On this side, now that I was kind of familiar with the process, um, got this side out much, much simpler. So. I'm, again, I'm going to kind of orient it like it would be on the bike. So this right here is the front side. This is going to be the rear. Um, so same thing here. I want to position the new peg so that, again that it breaks away towards the rear. So it needs to go like this. All right, guys. So same thing on this side as the other side. I'm going to just give the inside of here a good little wipe down. Get some kind of crap. A little dab of blue Loctite onto the threads, like so. And I'm going to begin by threading this guy in by hand. So it's going to go just like this. Spin this up, push it in, and fit this over the brake master cylinder, and that fits perfect. And then right there is where 
everything is going to go. So, let me just make sure. I'm going to try and run this pen through here before I keep going any further, and which I can't. Oops. And wiggle it back and forth, just like that. Okay, so that pen is through, and we are going to torque this guy down on this side to 50 foot pounds as well. Whoops, wrong size. So this is a six millimeter allen key on this side as well. Make sure it's all the way in there. get this guy worked out. Okay. And let's get this cotter pin back through here. And guys, I know you guys are not going to be able to see this, but um, I'm going to go ahead and run this cotter pin back through. One thing I did want to point out, guys, is that I actually had the orientation of the control incorrect at first, but and it was kind of a, a duh, aha moment on my part, but this uh, heel peg on the brake side, it needs to be in the forward orientation. I mean, that's the whole point of this, right, is to get the controls more forward. I had them in the back before, and... Um, I noticed that it was way different than the left side, so I'm like, something's off here. So I got a hold of Keith. He helped me out. Got me str he got me straightened away, and um, I've now got this in the correct orientation. The other thing I want to mention, too, is that I also have the pins the wrong way. So, the re so what happened was, I think, is that these are a really tight fit, and... The, the head of the pin actually goes into the recessed side of the control. So I thought it was flipped around before because I couldn't find the groove. But what I actually did was, the pattern coating can be pretty thick on these. So what I did was I just took a, 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 a I'm drawing a blank on what this is called, a punch, a pretty big one. And I just set it right here on the head and I just lightly tapped on it until you can see down here where the groove of the circlip become visible. I don't know if you guys can see that. But that is, I've now got it in the right way. So just make sure when you guys are putting the pins in that the head goes on the recessed side of the control and that the disc goes on the bottom part. Guys, another issue that I had with the controls using the R1S pegs was that when the pegs, and this is the heel peg by the way, when the heel peg was installed in the forward control it was like super loose even with the washers that R1S supplied so this right here when you remove the factory um, the pivoting heel pegs they have these like arched washers I don't know if you guys can see that but you have to reuse these these take up all that slack that's in the peg so I had to go back and and reinstall these with R1S pegs even though I'm not using the factory pegs so just a tip because I had a ton of play in the factory heel pegs, or I'm sorry, in the R1S pegs with the new controls because this was not in there. And, and R1S supplies some super thin washers, but it's not enough to take up a lot of that gap in there. All right, guys, there you have it. You have the Psycho uh, one and three quarter inch four controls by Altered State Designs um, installed with R1S pegs and these are, man, these things are nice. I can't wait to, it's late here, so I'm not gonna be able to get out and ride, but kind of moving back, you can really see how it really complements the bike and the 
you know, the black theme of the bike, getting rid of those silver arms. So it just looks so much better. Um, so guys, I hope you liked the video. I hope it, it helps you out a little bit. Um, I hadn't really seen anybody actually post a video on how to do forward controls before. I, I mean, I've probably been out here an hour, super simple job. Um, once you kind of get those pins or those little clips taken out. So, um, I appreciate you guys watching the video and I hope this, this helps you guys out and, um, enjoy and ride safe. Thanks guys.